Let's say you have no words to describe colors, and you are presented with the following colors. Red, green, blue, magenta, yellow, and cyan. You may only define three words to describe all six colors. It should be evident from the diagram that to describe all the colors, the best choices would be to define red, green, and blue. The reason they're the best choice is because any one of the set, red, green, blue, cannot be used to describe another one of the set. However, you can easily describe the colors yellow, cyan, and magenta given our choices. I would say, in a non-technical sort of way, that the definition of red, green, and blue are orthogonal to one another. Orthogonal descriptors are generally the most efficient and intuitive method of description. You can think of all sorts of real-life examples of this. The game 20 questions is basically an exercise in orthogonality. Orthogonality requires two or more elements to make sense. Let's start with two lines. Two lines are said to be orthogonal to one another if they intersect at right angles. To denote that lines A and B are orthogonal, we write A, then an upside down T, then B, and we read it A is orthogonal to B, which also implies that B is orthogonal to A. Another equivalent definition is to say that A and B cannot be projected onto one another. This 2D example should look familiar because all of the standard coordinate systems employ orthogonality. Let's illustrate what it looks like when projection does take place. In this example, we are illustrating the line B's projection onto the line A. The projection of B on A consists of that part of A which could be used to describe B. To add a third dimension to the space, we draw a line perpendicular to our first two lines. We can describe three dimensions completely even if the lines aren't perpendicular, but it's just the most efficient and logical way. Projection in 3D is a natural extension of projection in 2D. You may consider projection between the lines individually, or you can combine two lines and call their combination a surface and consider the projection of the third line on a surface. Anything beyond three dimensions is much more difficult to visualize, although there are definitely methods employed, such as color coding or time lapses. In fact, we say that there are an infinite number of orthogonal dimensions, and we use that concept quite often in the analysis of stochastic processes. Recall that functions relate to spaces. There are a few rules that govern the shape of functions, such as each input can only correspond to a single output, but in general, there's an infinite amount of functions that can relate these two spaces. What if we wanted to describe the entire function space? Many of the lines are so similar to each other, there's no point in re-describing them constantly. We could just say something like, this line is like that line, just shifted to the left one. There are some lines that are so different that we do need to re-describe them. To describe all the functions possible, we describe a set of basis functions, and then say all other functions can be described by a linear combination of these functions. My extremely non-technical definition of basis functions is as follows. Basis functions are building blocks which, through linear combinations, can describe all functions possible in a given function space. You can think of it like saying, instead of listing all the sentences possible in the English language, let's just make a book of all the words possible, then give a couple rules governing how these words can be combined. In analogy to orthogonality, let's add that we will not list words like cat and cats separately. The definition of orthogonality for functions involves what is known as the inner product, which is an extension of the concept of projection. Like projection, to satisfy orthogonality, the inner product must be zero.
We define the inner product of functions g of x and f of x as the integral from negative infinity to infinity of g star of x times f of x with respect to x. If the inner product is equal to zero, then functions g and f are said to be orthogonal. One thing to remember is that just as there exists more than one language and its accompanying dictionary, there exists more than one collection of basis functions which could be used to describe a function space. In basic signal processing, the emphasis is on the collection of possible complex exponentials as our basis functions.